I definitely believe there's an expectation for when a man wants sex from his wife or from his partner. I believe that the male's voice is very dominant in my up upbringing and in the South Asian communities. I believe it's not right. I believe that women have a voice. We have a voice to raise and we should be saying what we want. I think that a lot of people think consent is just saying yes, um, and that is part of it. But I think often there is that difference between I'm saying yes, but actually inside I'm feeling kind of uncomfortable. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. I'm sort of on the fence. Um, so in my opinion, I think consent is a lot broader. I think it involves feeling ready, feeling happy, feeling comfortable. Saying yes, but not just saying yes out loud. Um, I think the person that you're close to should be able to tell from your body language. You know, you're actually feeling okay if you're actually feeling like, yes, I want to do this. Um, so I think, yeah, it's kind of the whole package. Do you think consent applies in all relationships? So, for example, if someone was to get married, do you think consent would still apply then? Yes, I think it does, because you can always change your mind and the partner should understand if they do change their mind and not mm -hmm. pressure them. Yes, definitely. I think you should definitely be aware that you can take consent at any, at any time and no longer consent to something yeah. if you don't feel comfortable, if you don't want to do it. I think there's definitely pressure between for a woman to have sex with their husband and like I remember my like my own family members from older generations telling me that a husband like, you know if a husband wants it then you have to give it and I think obviously if they're still being taught to grandchildren then I can only imagine it still might be influencing younger people today and I think it's probably due to like just the patriarchal society we live in, we always think that women have to give, we always have to give, we're always the givers. Um, it's never kind of what we want. The understanding of consent in South Asian communities after marriage is kind of a tricky subject. There's quite a clear understanding um, of marriage being a contract between a man and a wife. Um, and I think that entails certain responsibilities and rights and roles. Uh, a South Asian woman can often feel that she has to kind of fulfil those responsibilities, um, whether that's pleasing the husband through kind of taking care of the house, whether that's um, taking care of the kids, um, cooking the evening meal. Um, and I think sex kind of comes into that. Um, so in a traditional marriage, um, it might be that the wife feels like she needs to please the husband whether or not she's sort of happy and comfortable to actually do so. Um, but actually what's important is that both parties, um, if they want to, if they're willing, um, can kind of share that experience, um, give consent and be kind of comfortable and happy to do so.
if my friend were to tell me that she wasn't ready to have sex with her husband on the day of marriage, I would say, don't do it, I think. If you're not ready, then you just shouldn't do something. I think it's as simple as that. And I think communication is so key in that aspect and just to talk with your partner and just say, hey, I don't think I'm ready for this. That doesn't mean that I don't love you. That doesn't mean I don't care about you. It's just, I'm just not ready for this. And I think everyone has a different time in their life when they want to do something as intimate as that with another person. And I think the slower and the better you take it and the more comfortable you take it, then the more trust that there is over time. The best advice that I can give is always listen to yourself. Listen to your body, listen to your mind. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. If it feels right, then do it. But listen to your heart, listen to your intuition because that's your body talking for you. You are number one. You have to look out for number one. Your health is yours, it's not anybody else's. There is definitely help out there. You can access help through GPs any support groups that are in your communities, any women's support groups, just go out and seek advice, speak to somebody, just speaking to somebody or a friend helps massively. You know, it is abuse. I know sometimes that you can be in two minds and you can be in torment thinking that's what you gotta do for your husband, but it's not right. If you are being pressured into having sex or are being raped, there are services out there that you can talk to. They are there for you. They're there to listen, just speak out. You need to give consent for all types of sex and it does not have to be penetrative. Both partners need to give consent for any types of sex and consent can be withdrawn at any point. Consenting to one activity does not mean that you have to consent to everything. There is a lot of support available for people who have been raped and for those who have experienced sexual abuse. All support services are confidential and they can provide translators if required. Forcing someone to have sex is rape, whether it's by your husband or someone else. For support, you can contact any of these specialist services. Bum bum bum, bum bum bum, bum bum bum.